This Debaco University video will be explaining the basics of muscles. We'll get into some of the slight into the details, but hopefully give you a good overview of understanding. All right, let's get into muscle basics explained here. Well, first off, why do we see striations in our skeletal muscles? Well, this is because the myofibrils are densely packed and they're rod-like contractile elements called myocytes. You can see that kind of right here in the image. They make up most of the muscle volume and myofibrils are perfectly aligned within the fiber. They do create this repeating series of uh, A bands and I bands. So this I band is a way to remember it, light. I is in light, so you have that um, I for the uh, I bands. And then the dark or the A bands right here. So dark has the letter A in its second letter and that um, can help you remember that dark A bands light eye bands um, there. So sarcomeres in this banding pattern, well there's thin filaments that don't overlap the thick filaments in the lighter H zone. Uh, the M lines appear darker due to the presence of the protein Desmin. The smallest contractile unit of the muscle is a sarcomere as we can see right here. The region of the myrofibril between the two successive Z discs. Uh, so we have a Z line here and a Z line right here. That is your sarcomere right in that defined region. The regular organization of these sarcomeres gives skeletal and cardiac muscles their distinctive striated appearance. Remember, smooth muscle does not have these striations. And these are composed of myofibrils made up of the contractile proteins. The myofibrins are the two types, those thick myosin and those thin actin filaments. Now, sarcomere in the sliding filament theory, so there will be another video on that specifically, but during contraction, myosin ratchets along the actin myofilaments compressing the eye in the H bands. So the thing of it is basically there's a sliding that's occurring. If you have your fingers here and you're sliding, even though we have a thick and thin filament, we have this sliding. That's how you get the term sliding filament theory. The A band remains consistent th throughout as the length of the myosin. Myofibrins does not change. We're having this, if you can kind of see here, the H band is very spread out here, and here it is contracted because we've slid over there. More information on the sliding filament theory video. So these myofibrins, this banding pattern that we see, those thick filaments extend the entire length of the A band, whereas the thin filaments extend across the I band and partway into that A band region. You can see that right here. The Z disc are coin shaped sheets of proteins. You see connections uh, anchor the thin filaments and connects the myofibrils to one another. You need an anchoring point because you're going to be pulling things together. So that anchoring point is what's allowing that to go through and contract. Now, if you've heard of tendons and ligaments and use that as interchangeable terms, that's in misnomer because technically a tendon is a flexible but an elastic cord of strong fibrous collagen fiber attaching muscle directly to bone. Uh, so tendon is muscle to bone. Uh, in contrast, a ligament is a short band of touch flexible fibrous connective tissue that connects two bones or two cartilages together and holds together a joint. So you may have heard the ACL, well that L portion is referring to the ligament because that is physically linking those two bones together where a tendon is going to attach that muscle, in this case the hamstring, here to the bone region. So how do muscles work in a very basic sense? Well, skeletal muscles are attached to bones by uh, straps of connective tissue, again, called those tenants I mentioned. Bones pivot about the flexible joints pulled back and forth uh, by attached muscles. Keep in mind an important point is that muscles can only pull, never push. They can only pull things together. They don't push in the other direction. Antagonists allow for the movement in the opposite direction. So whichever a muscle or a group of muscles does, another muscle or group of muscles undoes this. So if one is pulling in one way, you're gonna have another group that's gonna pull in the opposite direction because the other side muscles will relax, causing that joint to be able to um, rotate amongst that fulcrum. So how do muscles work? We need a point of origin and we need a point of insertion. So origin is the muscles that end attached to the tendon by a stationary bone. It's in a fixed position, that origin. The insertion is the end that's attached to the bone that moves during the muscle contraction. So if we're using my arm as an example, this would be your you know, origin up here. And the insertion will be down at the elbow joint here because that would be allowing those bones to move. 
Now, antagonists, as I mentioned before, muscles in immovable joints are attached in opposing pairs. It's the antagonist. Flexor retracts the limb, and extenders will extend the limb. So if we look kind of right here, we have our movement here. Flexors are retracting the limb, pulling, pulling this up in this direction. Extenders are extending that limb. And we see that here with the hamstring compared to the quadriceps. So having the kicking motion here, like uh, for soccer, flexors are the hamstring pulling the leg um, back. And then the extenders or quadriceps would be extending that forward, allowing the individual to kick the ball. Now, two types of muscle uh, contraction, or two main categories, I should say. We have the isotonic, which is the muscle shortens, uh, thus moving bones. And we have the isometric, which is muscles that not shorten, but exerts a force. So think of this if you had a pail of water. If you're picking up that pail of water and lifting it up, well, that muscle is shortening there. We're lifting that three kilogram weight. Isometric is if we just kind of hung our arms straight and we have stood up and our, and our arms were still straight, but we're still exerting a force to support the weight of that bucket of water, in this case, the six kilogram weight. So normal versus atrophied muscles, if you've sadly have any, had any accident and put uh, you know, an arm in a cast or a leg in a cast, that can lead to an atrophied muscle. And that's muscle mass that's reduced uh, simply because of not being used or disuse. Although atrophy due to disuse can often be reversed with exercise and physical therapy, muscle atrophy with age, referred to as sarcopenia, is irreversible. So as you get older, your muscles overall will simply atrophy as a product of age. So muscle metabolism and energy for uh, contraction here. Respiration is release of energy from sugar to make ATP. Remember, there are two pathways, aerobic uh, and anaerobic. So anaerobic is without oxygen. Aerobic requires oxygen. Aerobic is preferred because there's a gr much greater amount of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, that's generated. However, when you work out, when oxygen gets low, aggressive workout you're going through, your body will generate lactic acid fermentation pathway would be favored to generate some ATP. However, keep in mind that when your body does use ATP, protons, hydrogen ions, are produced, resulting in an acidic environment. It's the acidic environment that causes your muscles to burn. Lactic acid is slowly converted to pyruvate in the, li in the liver, so you'll have that breakdown process, but that burning muscle feeling is really not directly a derivative of lactic acid, but it is a derivative of the simple acid uh, form there. Other videos on this channel on lactic acid fermentation more detailed, but that burning feeling is really just protons, that acidic feeling, not because directly because of lactic acid. Uh, if you ever had your eye kind of, kind of twitches a little bit here, where we kind of get that little uh, twitchiness of the eye, uh, this can be cause of stress, limited sleep, or uh, high caffeine consumption, probably might be uh, factors contributing to you while you're watching this particular video. Uh, at, at Thanksgiving, if you want to have good uh, table conversation, you might know that there's white meat and dark meat. We're looking at our, our chickens and turkeys. Uh, we're looking at this um, myoglobin, which is muscle hemoglobin. So white meat is fast twitch muscle fiber, short energy burst, but it does tire quickly. It does have lower fat content, but slightly higher protein content. And this would be the turkey breast if you're looking at um, the bird. Dark meat, if you prefer dark meat, that's your slow twitch muscle. It can work for very long periods of time. It does have high oxygen requirement and therefore a high myoglobin content. Higher fat content, but is also mono and polyunsaturated fats. Slightly higher cholesterol. And this would be found in the turkey legs, wings, or thighs. So if you're having that Thanksgiving conversation, remember white meat would be the breast of the turkey, and that's going to be your fast twitch muscle, short burst of energy for the um, turkey. Dark meat, if you prefer that, was your slower twitch muscle for the turkey, and that's going to be the legs, wings, and thighs um, if you have an interest there. Hopefully this provides you a very basic overview of muscles and develops a greater understanding.